Henry from Atascacita has a question about insulation and needs some advice. Well, it's that old fiberglass versus foam thing again, Tom. Henry okay. writes, I want to know which is better, foam insulation or roll blown in insulation in the walls. I have a 20 by 20 add on on the back of the house, but it's hot in the summer, cool in the winter. And I have a feeling you're going to tell them how much better fiberglass is for this part of the world. Well, it's the overall picture. If you built a little igloo to keep a cup of ice cold for a certain amount of time and you did it out of fiberglass and then you did it out of the foam, the ice will stay colder longer in the foam. So in that sense, for that one little test, it's going to be better. I, I agree with that. That's why igloo coolers, they're king of the world here in this part of the country because that's what they do. They make a great cooler. You're not a piece, you're not a piece of ice and you don't need to be sitting in a cooler because you have other things like healthy air quality, healthy lifestyle, no mold growth, no moisture buildup. We have latent heat and sensible heat where we have to consider that as a human being, a, a actual living creature where a can of Coke or, or soda or beer or whatever, it doesn't care if it's sweaty as long as it's a certain temperature. So the fiberglass reacts better to all of the building materials the climate, uh, climate changes, and it's just a better product that lasts a long period of time without causing any other problems, such as uh, structure problems, wood rot, mold growth, anything like that, depending on what type of year we have. Right now, Charlie, you know, we're getting rained on like crazy. This is gonna be one moldy year, and people are gonna have problems with these mm -hmm. really tight homes on this type of year is the worst form, because it's not gonna ever be able to, the air, the latent heat, won't be able to dry out and it's it's going to be kind of a mess so uh fiberglass for me and the overall package is always the best energy prices or are, are, uh, prices are affordable and uh, you're going to be much healthier and your energy prices will be be low you don't have to try to you know spend 500 dollars to save a penny it doesn't make any sense so go with the best product for the whole package and not just isolate it for one kind of statistic or another Mm -hmm. I, and it, it, we've talked about this many times. And if you want to go to our YouTube channel and go through and search insulation, you'll find there's a bazillion questions and answers about this. Oh, goodness. And you and yes. you talk about how it makes the house more breathable, Tom, how it allows yes. the moisture to escape, makes the house healthier and all that. Is there a part of the world where that's not true? I mean, it's somewhere in the contiguous 50, 48 states here or Forty or fifty, depending. Well, on. It's always but, I mean, true. Is, is there a place yeah. in the states where you'd want to have have it more tight, like like with foam? Yes, and the answer is yes, and I'll get into it. And that's very cold climates. Uh, but all those physical properties go no matter where you are. I can give you two different, totally opposite examples. Uh, in Arizona, they don't care about latent heat. There is no moisture. There's no. It never rains. It's oh, it's a desert. So who cares about humidity? You want some, that's why they use swamp coolers. Add as much water as you can get into the air, people are more comfortable. So foam would be fine there because you don't have any place in the structure where it's ever gonna get wet from the humidity in the air and rot. You'd have to force feed it humidity to do that. So that's on the hot side, let's go to the cold side. Lake Placid, New York, I had an old farmhouse and uh, Actually, it was a lodge, they called it up there, that was refurbished from the 1800s. It was all foamed and it had vapor barriers in it too on the inside behind the sheetrock. Because it's so dry there and then it gets so cold, you're heating the air on the inside of the home and hot air holds more water than cold air. So the moisture wants to come in and it wants to get to the hot air, but there's not that much moisture. So people start introducing moisture into the home with humidifiers, I always did. And so we're trying to hold that water in the house. We don't want the freezing temperature coming in. So we hold the water in the house and if it gets into the wall, it'll find a place where it'll freeze. So you don't wanna have a freeze point in the wall and you don't want the moisture transferring into the wall. And you don't want the moisture if there's a lot of it outside coming in, sometimes that happens, but it's kind of rare. Uh, but you don't want a freeze point. That's where the foam makes it super tight. You don't get a freeze point in there. So it's all in how you act, you, you work with the big picture. Houston, Texas, or the Texas area in the Gulf Coast, 
We have water transferring back and forth. Humidity rates are 70%, 80% outside in many times. 60% is a nice dry day. Oh, it's so wonderful. You get that up north and it's raining in the house. You have icicles building up. So that's why it's all about the, the atmosphere on the outside and working with it to have a healthy home. And that's what we want. We want you to have a healthy home that's energy efficient, all those things. That's why we do the Ask Tom questions. If you click on the button there, it'll take you to that page and you can fill it out the form and send us your question um, or your challenge or your, you all know how something works. Send us pictures, whatever you need. We're, we're happy to help you. The, the answers are free and we put a new one up every day. So you have one in 365 chance of your question being in one of these videos we post one at homeshowradio.com our facebook page of course at homeshowradio.com there's no one every day